gonna start talking about how this shit works in your body. There's a lot of people that, that are misinformed when it comes to natty, pro-hormones, or gear, all right? And I always try to keep it as real as possible with you guys, and I'm gonna keep doing that because that's what I do. All right, I'm gonna wait for some people to get on. And basically what I'm gonna kinda go over is the different states that your body is in when you are on different performance enhancers and when you train naturally, all right? Cause that's something that is pretty important because a lot of people obviously are putting a lot of time and effort into supplements and performance enhancers. And I wanna show you how that shit works in your body to make sure you're not just rotating your fucking tires, all right? Because let's face it, nobody wants to spend a bunch of money at the supplement store or at the, you know, the guy with the pink fanny pack at the uh, neighborhood gym, or if you're getting it legally at a TRT clinic and then not getting the benefit from it, right? So number one, you got natural, a natural athlete, okay? Let's just say your body can absorb roughly about, let's just call it, and I don't know these exact numbers, but this is basically how it works in your body, okay? Let's just say your body can absorb 50%, okay, of protein that you are putting in your body, all right? Because what's gonna happen, there are certain chemicals in your body that are going to affect your gains, all right? There's things called glucocorticoids that are expelled in your body when you are working out if you are a natural athlete. Okay, so what happens is it prevents you from growing into a house. There's also a thing in your body called myostatin, all right? Have you guys ever seen those massive fucking cows that have gotten those magazines? That is a, that is a or, or they've also got the dog, it's like a whippet dog and the thing's all jacked. Those are dogs that have a, it's, it's almost a deficiency in myostatin. So their bodies don't produce myostatin, so they just get fucking enormous and huge, okay? There's actually some supplements that have been uh, marketed as myostatin inhibitors, but those are some of the things that are fighting against you when you are training naturally, okay? So naturally you're at 50%, all right? Then you wanna introduce a pro-hormone cycle. Let's just say that's gonna increase it to, instead of 50%, you're gonna be up to 70%. Okay, so now your body's able to uh, absorb 70% of your protein versus 50%. You see how there was a, a jump, but the principle stays the same, right? So your body's gonna need 20% more protein in your body, right, to be able to grow from that. Bully, whippets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's always a, like it's a fucking whippet or something like that, and the thing looks like, I don't know, like a bodybuilder, and they got the cows, it's a big white cow, and the thing's got muscles all over its ass and its back and everything. Those are, those are animals that are deficient in myostatin, okay? So here's the deal, guys. So now you're at a pro-hormone state, and those are things that you can get at your neighborhood supplement store. A lot of supplement stores carry them, we carry them, and what they are is basically, they convert into steroids in your body, okay? Not to be confused with the old pro-hormones of five years ago that were steroids sold as pro-hormones because they were not listed on the um, steroid control acts, okay? So basically they were steroids that weren't listed, right? So because those old pro-hormones everyone were taking were not pro-hormones, they were fucking, it was gear. It was basically gear that nobody had any type of a uh, regulation on, so they were sold as a um, supplement, right? But they corrected that in 2015 with the Steroid Designer Control Act and basically listed anything methylated or anything that has anabolic properties is considered illegal, all right? So long story short, today's pro-hormones are probably gonna give you about 70%, so you're gonna have to introduce more protein in your body. Let's kick it up another notch. Let's say gear is gonna take you up to 90%, okay? So what does that mean? That means you're gonna have to train another 20% harder and eat another 20% of protein, right? If you think about it, because over here, you can overtrain your body, let's face it. If you're, you know, if you're going crazy in the gym and you're eating your protein and you're a natural athlete, clearly it is possible to overtrain because your body's only gonna absorb so much protein because that's all your body's naturally going to allow you to absorb, period. You go over here, you gotta increase the protein, all right? You gotta increase the training. You gotta tear down that muscle tissue even further in order to get the results from your pro-hormone stack, okay? 
Let's kick it up another notch. Now you've got, you're on gear, okay? You're gonna have to eat that much more food, train that much harder, and that's where a lot of people get confused because let's face it, most people think, hey, this is just the steroids that are making somebody grow or making somebody look good, and it has nothing to do with all the other shit that the, dudes are put, that the dude is putting in, and that's why they get pissed when they're like, oh yeah, this is just steroids. Fuck you, it's not steroids. I'm eating 20% more protein, or fuck, I'm eating 40% more protein, training 40% harder, more intense, than to get those results, okay? Because if you don't, if you don't increase your protein, if you don't increase your training, you're not gonna get the full benefit of the gear. And for most part, for the most part, people, they keep dumping the gear in, right? But they're, but they're not increasing their protein and they're not increasing the training. So basically they're just rotating their tires and they're flushing money down the toilet and they're introducing their body to a bunch of side effects, okay? And you're probably like, who's this motherfucker up here trying to tell me how to get huge when hell, he's only 215 pounds, right? Well, guess what guys? Um, I got two bad shoulders. I'm a 40 year old man with a bad back and I will guarantee you, and I don't want to sound like that old fuddy duddy, but 10 years ago, back in my day, yeah, I was, I was a hell of a lot bigger than I am now, and I can post pictures to prove it. I'm not just one of these guys that talks a big game. I will post pictures to prove I was in much better shape when I had my fucking tendons in my shoulder and my back wasn't blown out, didn't have two discs blown out, I could barely fucking walk. <laughs> and a lot of that is due to, um, I was, was going overboard with my training. I would squat heavy as fuck. I would, um, you know, I wouldn't stretch properly. And these are all things that have caught up with me now at age 40. But now that I'm just trying to keep myself in shape and keep myself looking halfway decent, um, I can tell you right now, over time, if you're someone like me who is young or someone younger or someone like me, you could definitely benefit from this because I don't want anybody to make the same mistakes I made growing up and doing shit that was counterintuitive because I got to the point where, yeah, I got lazy. I was like, okay, let me introduce even more gear and even more gear and even more gear. And right, that number will go up, okay? But the problem is so do the side effects. And if you're not doing everything else incorporated or doing everything else required to grow and use that gear and actually, actually put miles on your body to where you can actually get somewhere, right? Because the food's the fuel, Okay, and then when you're training, that's you break down your muscle tissue in order to grow because your myostatin is going to be limited and your glucocorticoids are going to be blocked even more so. That's gonna enable you to get even bigger and bigger, right? The reason why you got the guys from let's just say the 70s versus the 90s, okay? I'm gonna tell you why. If you pick up any bodybuilding magazine, you will notice a drastic difference between the 70s and the 90s bodybuilder, okay? It's right there, big as shit, okay? Period, here's how it goes. The human being did not evolve in the 20 years from the 70s to the 90s. What happened was bodybuilders started started experimenting with things like insulin and growth hormone, okay? And obviously the amounts of gear, people wanted to get, see a bigger body, a bigger body, right? And it evolved into what you see in the 90s. And clearly there is a big difference between the 70s and the 90s. And I know a lot of people idolize Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I can tell you right now, he would have looked like a fucking cancer patient out there compared to those dudes like Ronnie Coleman, Nesser El Sambati, Jay Cutler, Marcus Rule, all those big, huge beasts that were out there that today don't look so good, right? There's a lot of, like Frank Zane, for instance, I wanna say he won the Mr. Olympia at 190 pounds, if you can believe that. I mean, that was, I wanna say that was in the early 80s or the late 70s he won a Mr. Olympia. I think it was in between Arnold's um, and then Franco Colombo won one in 1981. I don't believe he was much over 200 pounds. But then once Dorian Yates stepped on, on stage, that's when we noticed a big increase in the size of the athletes. Then after Dorian, it was, um, it was Ronnie Coleman. And then after Ronnie Coleman, Jay Cutler. And then we have the Phil Heats. And I don't know who's got it now, Sean Rodan or something like that. And I think, um, who was it? God, Dexter Jackson. Dexter Jackson won one in between there. And I can tell you right now, I stepped... I saw him at a Publix and I could have, I swear to God, I felt like Shaquille O'Neal standing next to him. I had to have at least, I felt like I had a foot of height on, but 
but he was definitely one of the most developed human beings I'd ever seen in person, that's for sure. But just to let you guys know, so if you're, if you're spending money on gear, if you're spending money on pro hormones, you have to make sure that you're doing everything else to increase your, your gains, basically. You can't just buy the fucking drugs. And I tell that to every swinging dick that comes in this store because a lot of times they, they go right to the protein shake and they're like, all right, let me get my protein, let me get my you know pro hormone here and there. And I'm like, dude, like, you know, if you're limited on funds, you'd be better off getting the grilled chicken over there in the produce section uh, or, or the, the meat section over at Winn-Dixie than you would buying that protein, okay? Protein is something that a lot of supple supplement companies have. They sell because it's something that's easy. And back in the day, it was something that was thrown out, believe it or not, um, because it's a byproduct in turning milk into cheese, okay? The way was an actual byproduct. They would dump down the fucking drain until they found out that there was a, you know, there was a market for it. So then the price of it went through the roof. So I can tell you right now, if you're looking to get good quality protein, make sure you're sticking with your chicken breasts. I would stay away from red meat. You can do that occasionally, but I go white fish and white chicken breast. That's what I would recommend if you're someone who's 100% serious looking to get as ripped as possible. Because let's face it, most of you guys want to look good at the beach. You want to look good for the girls, this and that. Well, you got to have a high amount of, of uh, muscle mass and a low body fat to get that done. Let's face it. If you don't have six pack, if you ain't got a six pack of abs, fucking defined chest, separated arms, and look like... Uh, Goddamn Jason Momoa, you ain't shit, right? I get it, okay? It's year 2021, just flick your fucking phone and you can see every single swinging dick on the damn phone looks like a supermodel, right? Or a damn fitness model, I get it. So if you're looking to try to change the way you look and make sure that you are getting everything you want out of your gear and making sure that you're actively growing and not just wasting your money, I would recommend upping your protein definitely if you are somebody who is on gear or a pro hormone for that matter. So hope you guys are having a kick-ass week. I'll come back at you when I can. Again, we are having a big baller ass sale right now. You can basically get this shit for half price. Um, I don't know how much longer we're gonna run that sale. Again, if you're interested, you can get an NWO, yeah, NWO anabolic outlaw t-shirt. Um, I'm a big wrestling fan, so I just thought that was cool. And obviously I'm old as hell, so I remember the good old NWO back when I was in middle school. <laughs> so hope you guys are having a kick-ass, kick-ass week. See you.